Okay, uh, guys, I think I'm live. Can you just put in the this if I'm live? Uh, then we can start. Uh, guys, can uh, <coughs> uh, is the audio and video clear? Okay, we are live. Uh, I'm seeing a lag in my uh, screen. Am I clear, visible, everything? Uh, okay, uh, I'm clear as such, right? Uh, okay, fine. Cool. So let's start. Uh, so hi guys, welcome to Crackers video series. I'm Saili Kale. In this particular uh, video stream, we are going to be discussing para summaries, and this is an extremely important topic because uh, you can expect two to three para summaries in CAT. Uh, in the older pattern, there were three para summaries. With the uh, when uh, uh, now that the time has been reduced to 40 minutes, we still expect two para summaries to come. So it's a important part of verbal section, uh, VARC section as such. So it is important to have a game plan ready before you go in for your uh, CAT exam. So we'll be discussing how to solve these kind of questions and I've picked uh, six questions from uh, para, uh, para summary. I've tried to pick different genres, so like something which is like narrative, something which is philosophical, something which is building an argument. So I've tried to pick uh, different types uh, and uh, so that you have an example of each type of para summary as such. So before we actually start, what I would urge all of you is to please like the stream, please share it with your friends. If you're part of any telegram or WhatsApp preparation groups, please share it so that more students can join us and uh, more students can participate in our session. So uh, you can take the question as a test in uh, at kraku.in slash live. So if you go at kraku.in slash live, you can start taking it as a test. And if you take it as a test, then you will be able to uh, 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 you will be able to compete against your peers and see how well you are in this particular section or not. Uh, so let's, uh, we'll start in a few uh, minutes, but please uh, like and share the uh, stream and please uh, 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 share it in any WhatsApp or Telegram groups that you're part of. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So we are uh, a lot of people here, 115 people here. So that is good. Uh, just one second. I'll just one second pause the stream. Sorry, am I alive again? Okay, uh, am I live again? Uh, so it is uh, just go to kraku dot in uh, slash live. Okay. So there you will see at the top, you will see the uh, YouTube video. So this YouTube video uh, thumbnail will come and at the below uh, below that you will see like the test. I have not started the test yet. So the questions etc will not come yet. Once I start the test, the questions will be refreshed there by itself. So please just go to crackco.in slash live and keep the page open. And then you can, uh, if you keep that page open, you will see the questions as they go live. And I'll tell you once I start uh, with posting the questions, we'll post the questions in another five to 10 minutes as such. Okay. So uh, just go to crackco.in slash live and be online there so that you can take part in the uh, test. Also, please ask your friends to join in. If anybody is waiting to join in, please come in now so that uh, we can first cover the basics of para summary and then we can get started with the test. So I hope everybody is uh, ready for some para summary questions. Uh, also, uh, I'll be trying to go through as many questions as possible and try to answer any questions that are uh, there. Uh, so please uh, uh, put uh, any questions that are relating to para summary, please put them over here so that I can answer them during this session. Okay. So uh, can we get started? Is everybody ready? And if everybody is ready, then we can uh, start with what uh, what are the basics of how to answer questions from para summary before we start with the test. Okay, I see a lot of people have joined the uh, test also. So good. Uh, I hope all of you do well and a lot of people here also. Uh, okay, uh, so Mansi asks how many questions can we expect this time and uh, number of VA questions. So essentially, we went from 34 questions, uh, uh, since there are 34 questions uh, from 60 minutes, uh, from that if we go down to 40 minutes, we believe there should be something around uh, 22 to 24 questions. We think it would be around 23, 24 and uh, I still expect 4 RCs because 3 RCs would be too little uh, to judge the quality of a student. Essentially, you have to also judge uh, the quality of a student and if one RC is bad among the three RCs in the sense that if one of the RCs is something that is very difficult, then your uh, scores will tend to clump 
and as a paper setter you wouldn't want that also so i expect four rcs and with four rcs i expect four into four uh, like four question rcs rcs to be shorter so there will be four into four that is 16 questions which are rc and i expect uh, seven questions which are va so i expect the split to be like three para jumbles two para uh, summary and two ooc uh, this can change uh, the va questions can be more or less uh, depending on the paper setter you can't really uh, uh predict the paper setter but more or less i expect four rcs and i expect like around 20 uh, 22 to 24 questions in uh, 22 to 25 also in uh, to be solved in 40 minutes so that is my expectation as such okay um so let's get started uh, so firstly i'll cover how to basically uh, uh, approach para summary and how to actually go about the process of solving para summary questions See, Paris summary also uh, tests the same ability that you have uh, in reading comprehension. So, in reading comprehension, what you have to basically do is read each paragraph, find the main point of each paragraph, find the overall main point, and then answer questions accordingly. Here, you have just one paragraph, and you have to completely understand the main point of that paragraph. You don't have a whole lot of time, but if you have been doing your reading comprehension properly, if you have been doing the exercise of active reading properly, this should come as second nature to you. So essentially what you have to do in paragraph uh, para summary questions is understand the main point of that para summary uh, a lot of students get confused that you have to summarize each and every aspect of the paragraph that is not the case you don't have to consider all the details that are there all the arguments that are there this is not a summary as such i remember whenever you uh, in school we used to write a pressy so a pressy would be a 60 word uh, summary of a long passage this is not pressy writing this is not something like that this summary is going to be a lot smaller and it is only going to focus on the very main aspects of the paragraph. So whenever you read the paragraph, what you have to basically do is you have to break down the paragraph. So firstly, when you read the paragraph, break it down into, so you should understand what part of the paragraph is context, what part of the paragraph is the main point, what part of the paragraph is details, examples, supporting arguments so essentially the context is uh, something that the author says uh, uh, essentially to uh, before he makes up a point or something like that the author will give some background about uh, what he is making the point in for example the law and order system today or for example women's rights today before he makes a point specific to women's rights or uh, specific to law and order so essentially he is laying the background for his point as such uh, in case of uh, narrative kind of paragraphs the author will set the scene as such in case of descriptive paragraphs the author will describe what uh, place he has gone to or what location or event he is describing in case of historical paragraphs the author will introduce the time and era as such so all of those basically give you the context and the setting of the paragraph after that the author uh, essentially the remainder of the paragraph will be a mixture of main point and the details as such so you, you have to identify what part of it is the main point that the author is trying to make and what part are the arguments or supporting details that he has to give to make the main point so essentially you can think of it in this way that uh, through the rest of the paragraph the author is making some main point and you can say that okay this part is the main point and the remaining part of the paragraph should essentially support this main point it should further that main point it should be an example which proves that point it should be a uh, details which essentially give you the scope of the main point or essentially explain why that is the case uh, or it can be basically giving you information about something so for example if the author wants to inform you about a special ability of an animal then the author will say okay this uh, is the the special ability like for example dolphins can uh, 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 dolphins have a lot of cranial capacity and they can think and emote and then the author will give you other examples of their ability to think and emote but that is basically uh, essentially adding information to his larger point about how dolphins are evolved creatures who can think and emote so essentially you have to identify okay what part is the supporting argument what part is supporting details what are examples and you have to realize that everything else has to further the overall main point at times the main point might not be directly given in the paragraph in the case you are just given details and supporting arguments you have to actually infer or conclude on that basis the main point of the paragraph so in all cases just remember that you have to go after the main point 
the summary should include the main point or main points as such there can be multiple main points for example if i am making two arguments about something both of those arguments should be there in the para summary you can't say that i am just uh, so for example if i make two points why uh, the lockdown should not be extended saying that it is the economy and uh, uh, it is a question of the survival of those who are uh, living day to day so i have made two arguments so essentially that paragraph has two main points so if i make two main points my para summary should have both main points so just remember you have to put in main points of the paragraph you have to edit away all the details example supporting arguments of the paragraph so whenever you are uh, reading the paragraph break it down identify the main point or main points and that should be part of your uh, option the second thing that you should do is option elimination ultimately you can have multiple ways of phrasing the uh, para summary as such i would write a different para summary as compared to somebody else so option uh, the options are essentially limitless but some of the options have to be clearly wrong for the right option to be right so essentially the second thing you have to do is option elimination so whenever you are doing option elimination you basically have to see the remaining options and you have to say that okay uh, i see option a b c d option a say contains a distortion a distortion basically means that it distorts what is given in the paragraph what is given in the option is different from what is given in the paragraph the logic doesn't match the facts don't match the degree of uh, the assertion doesn't match so for example the facts can be twisted saying that okay 18% of the population views it favorably you can change it to 18% of the voting population views it favorably now this is changing things okay 18% of the population overall population is not the same as 18% of the voting population secondly you can also uh, distort the degree you can distort the degree by saying that uh, 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 very few of the items that were on sale were of any use okay now here i am saying very few which means that uh, only one or two might have been of use or uh, a small minority of them were of use but if i change the degree and i say that none of the items that were on sale were of any use i am changing the degree of the statement so any such distortion you should immediately catch and say no no clearly this is a distortion the author has changed the uh, what is given in the paragraph uh, again you can change the logic by saying that okay if these two things occur together you can say that it is interesting that these two things occur together and in the option you can change the logic by saying that these two things occur together because a causes b now a, a false causality like this is basically a distortion so all of these things you should immediately pick up on and say that okay clearly this means that uh, this option is not true as per the information given in the passage so i can eliminate this option similarly anything which misses the main points you can eliminate at times what happens is that students identify multiple main points say they say that okay there is main point 1 main point 2 and main point 3 what you should always do in such cases is have a priority order for main points main point 1 should be more important than main point 2 should be more important than main point 3 and your option should not miss main point 1 so basically always think of main point 1 as the par parent main point that is the overall bigger main point that the author is trying to create and main point 2 and main point 3 as smaller points that the author makes but they are less important than main point 1 so essentially if anything uh, any option misses main point 1 you can remove that option of the remaining options if any one misses main point 2 and 3 then you can remove that option so essentially you should see uh, with the lens of what is the most important thing that option should have and from that perspective you should pick the right option so this is basically how you should do option elimination uh, we'll be starting with our session soon if anybody has not joined in on the uh, 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 on the test please join now so our test will be at kraku.in/live This is where the test is being hosted. I'll be posting questions soon, so please join there. So that once you join, you everybody can participate in the test as such. I see a lot of people have joined in. I'm very very glad. Uh, I hope that this helps you in your preparation. It's uh, uh, CAT is coming up, and every small uh, bit of effort matters. So uh, let's make sure that everybody actually works hard during this test. Please take take this test uh, seriously with all seriousness because. Uh, uh essentially if you uh, uh if you put in the effort every single day 
uh, then only you will actually reach the bigger goal and if your bigger goal is cracking cat every day every uh, small uh, step matters so don't just view the video please actually take the test like you would actually take cat okay so i'll be starting in uh, a short while so please make sure you join and uh, those who actually win the who come first uh, three in the test uh, will win a t-shirt from kaku and uh, we'll also give you the uh, combo package which is basically daily target plus mocks so uh, our mocks are uh, i feel they are the closest to uh, actual cat they are exactly the right level we have thought about uh, what difficulty should it be what kind of mix of question should it be so we have thought of all of those uh, things and we have made uh, a mock series which uh, i feel is extremely close to actual cat so please uh, uh, join into the test and please try to uh, uh, take the win at the test so that you can uh, uh, get the uh, mock uh, mock plus daily target package so i'll be starting soon so is everybody ready if everybody is ready if you put it in uh, the uh, uh the uh, if you put it in the chat i'll start off with the test as such okay is uh, my this might also be slightly laggy think uh, i'll be answering your uh, query soon once i post the question i have some time to answer queries so then i take a look at the questions that are asked and then i try to answer the queries so uh, please put your questions now and then go off to answering the question okay if everybody is ready we will start okay uh, let's uh, if anybody wants to know where you can see the test it is kraku.in slash live okay let's get started we have hit 200 students so it's very very good okay so let's get started i'll uh, okay uh, so i'll clear this so we'll start with the uh, uh, this test so i think uh, ready okay everybody is ready okay good so let's start this is your first uh, question that has been posted the leaderboard so guys uh, take a uh, 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 try the question and um, in the meanwhile i'll try to answer your queries as such so let me see the queries that were asked okay. So Abhishek asks that I take notes of the passage while solving and it reduces my speed but accuracy is high, what should I do? So basically, initially in your preparation, you should aim at accuracy because if you are solving it correctly, with each correct attempt, you are building your confidence, you are building your know-how of how to solve. So you should target accuracy. Now that there is only one month left, now you should actually be actively working on your attempt rate. Uh, keep doing that, keep taking notes. But if your speed is slowing down quite a lot, it means that you are wanting in practice. So you need to practice more and more questions. Essentially, uh, this is something that I've seen with a lot of students, especially like uh, if you have uh, been working for a year or two, uh, you have gone out of the habit of writing down. Because uh, essentially what happens is that you write, uh, write in school, you write in junior college, uh, you write in uh, undergrad, but you don't generally write a whole lot in uh, during work. So you lose your uh, ability or your practice of writing. So what I would say is that keep writing and essentially learn how to write while uh, you're thinking and while you are uh, uh, trying to formulate your thoughts, start writing so that you save on time. Your essential task should be that whatever time it takes for you, for you to articulate your thoughts and write it down, with each practice you should try to make it lesser and lesser so that you don't take a whole lot of time to make the notes. The notes are not something that you are going to refer to later. Their accuracy, their readability does not matter. You have to make very rough notes so that you have an anchor, a uh, visual anchor for your RC attempt as such. It should basically tell you exactly what you have read and it should keep that anchored into your brain. So it should not be something that you are going to look at six months later and you should know exactly what you have written. So form doesn't matter, grammar doesn't matter. As long as you understand what you have written, you understand what you wanted to express, it is enough. So try to cut down on the time that is required. But as, as you said, it helps you improve accuracy. Why does it help you improve accuracy? Because it essentially enforces this discipline of articulation. It helps you, it makes you actually slow down, think what you are reading and then attempt questions. And that basically is what you should always do. You should articulate your thoughts before you answer questions so that you know what you are answering. 
uh, answering in general i feel that answering questions with an 80 to 90 percent accuracy even if you answer 80 percent of the paper is better than answering a uh, hundred percent of the paper with 40 to 50 percent accuracy it does not make any sense that way so always uh, other than the uh, oh, uh, uh, other than the theta types theta type questions just mark off whatever you want because there is no negative marking there but in other que que other like uh, this if you have uh, if you don't understand if you don't know how to exactly answer if you are not sure of the answer it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to just mark off randomly so always make sure that when it comes to picking between accuracy and attempt rate i personally prefer that you have high accuracy even if your attempt rate suffers a little but don't make uh, don't like uh, attempt half of the test and come because you want it to be 100% accurate just remember that if your uh, attempt rate is low you have to practice more and you have to keep practicing to build up the attempt rate okay okay uh, i guess most of you must have answered this question till now uh, okay so uh, i hope everybody was able to answer this question uh, a lot of you got this right i'm very happy for that see uh, this question is not a difficult question because it is a factual question uh, the important things to remember in a factual question where a lot of facts are suddenly like bombarded at you is not to get uh, uh, too uh, uh, it's not to get too bogged down with the facts because the facts are uh, uh, essentially the facts are given to support a point and your job is to actually look at the point and not the facts as such as long as the author makes the case the facts okay whether it is 60 percent 68 percent 70 percent doesn't make a whole lot of difference what matters is that you understand the author's point as such so let us take a look at the paragraph the most prominent journalistic response to fake news and other forms of misleading or false information is fact checking which has attracted a growing audience in recent years we found that one of uh, one of uh, one in four respondents read a fact checking article from a dedicated national fact checking website at least once during the study period uh, I, i'll just actually um i'll uh, increase it with the next one i think so uh, essentially uh, one second uh, do i have yeah yeah i think uh, this is better for uh, guys to read also so i this is much better yeah sorry about that i think this is easier for you guys to read okay okay so uh, essentially uh, uh, the uh, this says uh, people uh, there's a growing audience for fact checking and one in four people uh, have uh, read a fact checking article from a dedicating national uh, fact checking website recent evidence suggests that this new form of journalism can help inform voters However, fact checking may not effectively reach people who have encountered the fa uh, false claims at debunks. Only 72% of the respondents re report being familiar with fact checking. Among those that are familiar with fact checking, only 68% report having a very or somewhat favorable view of fact checking. And positive views of fact checking are less common among fake news consumers, especially those who support Trump. So what is the paragraph basically telling? The paragraph is telling that uh, it is informing you about fact checking and the uh, potential uh, drawbacks to its use as such. So the author says that fact checking is a uh, very good tool when it comes to uh, uh, combating fake news and it has a growing audience. One in four people claims to have seen a fact checking article. However, the uh, and this can be very useful whenever uh, this uh, it, this can help you combat uh, uh, fake news as such new form of help inform voters as such so essentially this is a useful tool with a growing audience but and this is where the author says that but a lot of people are not really aware of fact checking and of those who are aware a lot of them don't actually view it favorably only 72 percent are aware and of these 72 percent only 68 percent view it favorably so you can imagine that 28 percent are not aware at all and of the people who are aware of it 72 percent a good 32 percent don't view it favorably uh, not even a somewhat favorable view of it so essentially from this instead of looking at the details or the numbers what can you infer you can infer that the biggest limitation of fact checking is that a lot of people are not aware of fact checking websites and of those who are aware they are uh, uh, those who are aware also don't hold a favorable view of it so essentially what is the main point over here the main point is that fake uh, uh, fact checking is an important tool to combat fake news but it has its limitation in the fact that uh, a lot of people are not aware of it 
and secondly people don't people even though who are aware of it are not viewing it favorably as such so essentially those two aspects of fact news that it is useful to combat uh, fake news and uh, it has its limitations both should be there in your para summary so now let's take a look at the options fact checking helps engaging the genuineness of the matter shared uh this helps you only with the first aspect that it is useful it is useful in checking uh, and correcting fake news but it doesn't tell you the limitations of fact checking so option a is incomplete option b is most of the fact uh, most of the fake news uh, consumers believe that fact checking is a useless tool now again firstly uh, this has many problems firstly it doesn't tell you that fact checking is useful secondly it doesn't tell you that uh, a lot of people don't even know about fact checking and thirdly it actually exaggerates what people uh, say about fact checking it is said that they don't view it favorably but it is not said that they consider it a useless tool as such so you can't really say this so option b is a distortion and it is uh, it misses many key points as such so option b i can definitely say is not the answer fact checking is a valuable tool but many are either unaware of it or view it unfavorably now this takes both of the uh, main points firstly that it is useful to combat fake news secondly that uh, it uh, people are either unaware of it or those who are aware of it view it unfavorably so option c covers both of the points favorably so i think uh, this is a uh, potentially good para summary as such but i'll take a look at option d as well fact checking tool is less common among fake news consumers as compared to average consumers now there are many things wrong with this firstly it misses the fact that fact news is useful you have to first tell what it is it is useful that it is useful to combat uh, fake news you have to say that it is useful secondly you have to also say that people are not aware of uh, fact news many people are not aware of fact uh, of fact checker and thirdly you have to also say that uh those who are aware view it fav uh, less favorably now in option d it is said that it is less common so i'm assuming that it refers to usage even if it is uh, that it is less uh, uh, commonly used among fake news consumers as compared to average consumers that is not what is given in the paragraph what is given in the paragraph is that fake news consumers uh, view it less favorably it uh, positive views are lesser positive views are less common meaning that they view it less favorably as compared to the average consumer not that they know of it lesser or they view it lesser so that is basically the difference this is a distortion of what is given in the paragraph and that's why option d is wrong option c is the right answer i hope a lot of uh, you who were confused between c and d got why d is wrong see d is a distortion and always you should have this order or list in your mind okay this part should be there this part should be there this part should be there and if any of those key points are missing you can eliminate that option okay i hope that helps let's uh, uh, go on to the next question okay uh, is there a lag in the video uh, uh, okay so okay 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 uh, there's a lag between the test and the uh, uh, this uh, okay okay uh, Uh, okay i'll uh, okay i'll wait for 10 seconds before i uh, before the end of the test and before i start uh, submitting uh, 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 start uh, this uh, checking as such uh, not be an table to okay um uh, i i have not put the second question yet uh, if it's lagging please let me know because essentially the site and the uh, video are independent things uh, so many of you are viewing it in the same panel it might be an issue because uh, the question comes uh, at the bottom in fact the question will come before the question and uh, the submission of the question will happen before the explanation starts i'll definitely not start explaining before the question is uh, uh, done so okay uh, let's uh, 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 let's take a look at the next question okay so the next question i'm posting it soon so uh, guys be ready okay so the, your next question started okay <coughs> okay just uh, uh, i'll uh, after my discussion of the previous question is over i'll start it in like 10 15 seconds okay so the next question has been posted please uh, try to solve the question uh 
ओके लैग ओके यू गाइज आर यू वॉन्ट मी टू टेल यू एंड दैट आई बी पोस्टिंग एंड वेट टेन सेकेंड एंड सो दैट यू कैन गो देर ओके आई गॉट इट आई विल डू दैट इन द नेक्स्ट डेज वेर आई टेल यू दैट आई बी पोस्टिंग एनी वे दर इज लाइक अ फाइव सेकेंड लैग दैट इज बिल्ट इन फ्रॉम मी क्लिकिंग द बटन सो एनी वे दर इज लाइक अ टेन सेकेंड दिस बट आई विल जस्ट वेट टेन सेकेंड बिफोर एक्चुअली पोस्टिंग ओके um uh, if you are expecting 4 hours is this year would you suggest attempting 3 hours is while attempting all questions in it or should one attempt all 4 uh, hours is while question skipping questions in doubt um essentially see uh, if you know the answer if you are reasonably sure of the answer you should attempt it if you are confused between two options also and you are uh, more sure of one answer over the other attempt it at times uh but if you are not sure if you are like uh, it could be three any of the three it could be any of the four then don't attempt the question It is not about uh, whether or not you should uh, attempt uh, more RCs or more questions per RC. Essentially, once you read the RC, you should try to attempt all the questions from that. Reading the RC, reading the passage takes up a huge time, and that's a big investment. And you should try to make the most out of that investment. Then, if you read a passage, you understand the passage, you write down all of its uh, uh, the main points, and then you don't attempt a question, then it's wasted as such. So, try as far as possible to attempt every question for each RC that you read through. um uh i have uh, okay uh, in any if anybody is still uh, waiting to join the test is at cracku.in slash live okay and i know that a lot of students are already here so i'm glad that uh, many students are watching it uh, of through the this also okay um uh, okay uh oh is giving pain uh, you mean out of uh, odd one out um abhishek uh, basically uh, in odd one out you have to try to uh, if you are having very low accuracy the harder way to do a o, uh, odd one out is basically to make sure that you form the pattern in your head by your uh, this if you are sure that the rest of the paragraph works then you can be sure of the answer that is wrong if you are not sure that okay uh, you just see the remaining sentences and you think that they could probably form a paragraph and then you pick an odd one out you might actually make a mistake so generally when you are solving uh, oc paragraphs if you uh, oc questions if you are uh, uh, if your accuracy is low i would suggest that actually go through the pain of trying to unscramble the rest of the paragraph then your accuracy should improve slightly um okay uh, and i think some guys had uh, 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 put in questions uh, Uh, okay aman is be, uh, so aman is saying that in some rcs uh, he gets many negative marks in some he gets them right uh, so basically you mean that your accuracy is fluctuating a whole lot uh, so basically just remember that uh, your accuracy comes through practice uh, if you uh, do things consistently you will build uh, a good accuracy over time uh, if you are uh, getting uh, good scores in some uh, uh, some tests some in not in some tests basically then there is a lot of uh, luck coming into play it's not your uh, uh, consistency it's not your uh, efforts that are uh, uh, actually determining there's luck involved so instead of uh, relying on luck i would suggest that practice more and have a consistent approach to how to solve rc uh, make sure that you read uh, properly you read each paragraph write down the uh, each point of main point of each paragraph if you are methodical and consistent like that then your accuracy will not fluctuate okay um and uh, okay uh, i perspective of daily target para jumble and para summary same as that of cat the author uh, so me i didn't understand your question that uh, from the perspective of daily target para jumble and para summary same as that of cat uh, i didn't really understand your question if you uh, get a chance please can you explain uh, essentially if you are asking whether uh, your uh, no i'm not really sure what exactly is the uh, question there i just uh, if you can explain it a bit further then i'll try to answer your query um should we prepare for other va questions which used to be asked in previous year cat for example last uh, para completion or uh, i really don't think i think there is a low probability of that coming i won't rule it out saying that it won't come because who knows i'm not the paper setter i don't know whether uh, it will come or not for sure but i would actually think that it is a fairly low probability event i mostly like 95% expect the pa uh, paper to be uh, the rc plus para jumbles per plus oc plus para summary i think they have uh, 
already changed the pattern with uh, reducing the number of questions i don't think they will change it further but uh, one thing we can do is wait for the tutorial to come out the tutorial will help us uh, know better in case the tutorial you find fact inference judgment or para completion then you can work on it then but for now i would actually recommend sticking to rc para jumbles and uh, oc and para summary i don't think uh, for now we need to go to those areas uh, if it comes in the tutorial we'll have to actually work on that uh, uh, Shivani asks, is 30 days sufficient to master DILR section using Kraku's course? Uh, yes, uh, you can master it. Depends on how much hard work you are ready to put in. If you are uh, very, very committed to that goal, if that is what you want, that I am going to crack the DILR section, I am going to use all the material that is provided, sit for like uh, 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 adequate amount of time and keep practicing, you can definitely do it in 30 days. But uh, it, uh, we have like all the resources to do that. We'll give you hundreds of solved questions, a lot of uh, uh, example sets, sectionals, everything that you possibly could need to crack it. But essentially, it depends on your effort. It is, uh, uh, I can teach you how to do, uh, how to solve, but uh, ultimately you have to actually solve it in the paper. So it uh, depends on you essentially. Uh, if you uh, put in the hard work, yes, you definitely can do this. Okay. Uh, any course that one, uh, uh, so, uh, so essentially, uh, Ayush, we have uh, a lot of good videos for geometry in case you're working, uh, uh, if you want to get a quick, uh, uh, this for geometry, we have covered all of our geometry and concept videos. We have a lot of questions, solved questions on geometry also. We have tried to look at it from different aspects, basically, uh, uh, seen it from how to actually approach it from the question side, how to approach it uh, from the concept side. Uh, solved questions, uh, different types of solved questions. So we have an exhaustive uh, video collection on geometry. In addition to that, if you are not a uh, premium member, I would actually suggest also take a look at our uh, free quant videos which we have put up. I think we have put up like uh, master, uh, like essentially quant revision part one, part two, and in both of in one part of them, I cover almost geometry extensively. So in case you are looking for just a little bit of refresher, you can go there if you want like. Uh, an in-depth source, you can uh, check out our course and we have covered it in detail in our course as such. Okay, um, let's, uh, I think we can uh, start discussing this question. So, let's consider the given question. Uh, let me see how many got it right. A lot of people got it right, so I am very happy. Uh, so, uh, Braun presented his theoretical case by marshalling his evidence in many hundreds of pages of data tables and statistical summaries. While several other naturalists of the early 19th century also pursued a numerical approach to taxonomy, Braun took it further than anyone else and championed it as a new methodology of paleontology. Along with his statistical tables, Braun also invented, uh, presented innovative visualizations of his data in the form of what are now called as spindle diagrams. These depict changes in the diversity of a higher ta taxonomic unit, say a family, as a line whose thickness varies depending on the number of species or genera uh, it contains at a given time. So, what is this paragraph about? This paragraph is about a uh, uh, is about Braun, who is a naturalist, and uh, it depicts how he actually went about his work. The author is basically praising him by saying that he uh, was far more uh, uh, thorough in his numerical approach uh, uh, to taxonomy. He did uh, others also did it. Uh, others also took the numerical approach, but nobody was as uh, went in as the as uh, in depth as Braun. He was like the most methodical, most uh, um, uh, essentially he was like the uh, further than anyone else, and he basically uh, championed a new uh, methodology, championed it as a new methodology for paleontology. So basically, saying that Braun was at the forefront of the numerical approach to taxonomy. That is first point. The second point is that he was also inventive in how he actually uh, showed his data through inventive uh, visualizations and he gives the example of spindle diagrams. So the spindle diagram is an example of how Braun actually uh, created something new so that he could actually display his uh, data in a visual format. So basically if you see the paragraph, you get the uh, main point over here that Braun took it further than anyone else. What did he take further? A numerical approach to uh, uh, taxonomy. He took it uh, further and championed it as a new method for paleontology. This is the first uh, point. And the second point is that uh, he invented, also presented innovative visualizations like the spindle diagrams. 
So this spindle diagram is an uh, supporting detail. So basically, he had innovative visualizations. He had uh, he had a uh, thorough numerical approach to taxonomy, and he did it more than any other naturalist of his time. Okay. So uh, basically, that is the main point. So this is essentially praising Braun, and he is telling what are his two contributions. One is his uh, methodical, uh, like uh, 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 essentially emphasis on numerical approach, and second is his inventive uh, uh, visualizations. Both aspects should be there as part of the para summary. So let us take a look at the options. Braun, like any other naturalist, presented his case by using many data tables and visualizations called spindle diagrams. Now here there is a distortion in it. What is the distortion? The author is saying that Braun went further than any other na uh, naturalist. He was like a at the frontier of it essentially. Now when he says that Braun, like any other naturalist, uh, the author is uh, this is basically saying that he was the same as the other uh, people uh, at other peers of his time but that was not the case so this clearly distorts what is given in the paragraph so i can eliminate option a braun unlike other naturalists who relied on usual uh, numerical approach went to create new visualization techniques to pres uh, present his theoretical case again this is a distortion this is not what the author says the author says that the other naturalists relied on numerical approach but braun went further than them and actually was at the forefront of the numerical approach so this is that uh, this is incorrect he was also a proponent of the numerical approach so option b is definitely wrong option c is the usage of innovative visualization techniques is critical in effectively presenting theories and this is what braun did this misses so many of the aspects firstly it misses the fact that he was at the forefront of numerical approach it misses the fact that the focus is braun not inventive visualizations the focus of the entire paragraph is braun and what he did so option C is clearly wrong for shifting the focus as such. So option C is wrong for that. Option D is no, Braun not only employed an extensive numerical approach to taxonomy, but also presented innovative methods of visualization called spindle diagrams. Covers both points perfectly, no distortion. This is the right answer. So the right answer is option D. Okay. Uh, let's. Uh, uh, I'll be posting in another ten seconds. So please go to the page. I'll be posting in another ten seconds. If uh, you guys got this right, uh, congratulations. This is a, this was on the easier side. We'll slightly take a look at harder questions, and hopefully we should have uh, three guys who are at the uh, uh, top as such. Uh, so keep on uh, uh, competing. This is a this is turning out to be a good competition uh, among all, everyone. So uh, let's see. Uh, I am posting the next question, so please be ready. So this next question is being posted. Okay. Uh, yeah okay okay so take a look at the next question and try to solve it i'll try to see and answer any queries that might be there uh, yeah milin the session is going to be available even after uh, we end streaming so this is going to remain on youtube so you can uh, watch it later also uh so Nikhil, no, uh, there won't be 34 questions. We'll definitely have lesser questions. We'll have around 23, uh, 22 to 25 questions max. We won't have 34 questions for sure. Um, Ayush says that I always read articles from Aeon and uh, should I add anything else? Uh, I think your reading is fine. You can uh, look up other sources. So basically you can look up more abstract sources like for example, uh, read up some philosophers once in a while, but that uh, your uh, practice of Aeon and Guardian is fine as such. Uh, but uh, now that we have uh, only one month left to cat, I want you to put more time and effort in actually solving questions. So you can continue reading for like half an hour, but like uh, the remaining like one hour or so should go into actual RC solving. Uh, so your uh, you should shift your focus more towards solving actual sets than just plain reading of articles. Uh, uh, how many questions are there today? There will be six questions today, Krishna. Uh, specifically in para jumbles and para summary. Um, I, uh, I didn't. I think uh, I missed your point as such. I want to know uh, the perspective of daily target para jumbles. 
uh, I, if you're asking if the daily target questions are the same level as CAT, they are uh, the same level as CAT in para jumbles and para summary. They are of the same difficulty level and uh, the process remains the same uh, whether it is solving the daily target or uh, this. Uh, so that has not changed as such. Uh, I'm not sure if I understood your query properly. Um, if anybody has any query, uh, please post here. I'll take a look at it and I'll try to solve it before moving on to the question as such. Um, I think I went too far up. I'll try to solve some of the recent queries. Uh, 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 you wanna, uh, uh, if you read uh, Aeon and Guardian article, should I add something more? Um, no, I think that is enough. Uh, again, I don't want you to spend a whole lot of time reading articles now. Solve questions, solve RC set. That is more important than reading articles. If you read two articles from two sources, that is enough. I'm not saying cut it off completely, but move towards solving sets. Uh, just plain reading is not going to do enough, uh, especially in the last leg. You're, there's one uh, month left. Uh, this is not a time for just uh, simple reading. You have to now focus completely on solving RC set. Okay. Um, Okay, Meghna, your uh, uh, maybe try uh, 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 Meghna try reset uh, reloading the page. Maybe the uh, page didn't load completely, but the timer started, so that's why you might have faced that issue. Um, Karan, your uh, you have uh, your mock scores are low. See, basically, Karan, your uh, you have to diagnose where the issue lies. Uh, is the issue with the fact that you don't know how to answer questions because either you're not aware of the concepts or you're not, uh, 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 you have like lost touch with many of the theorems that you learnt or uh, concepts that you learnt or you no longer know how to solve the DILR sets, you don't know the representation format. So you have to first uh, diagnose the problem. And the second part is you have to work towards correcting it. So you need like both uh, a help with concepts as well as a help with uh, practice. So try to find out where it is actually, uh, where is the shortfall, is it in concepts, then go make sure uh, you have, you read up and you see all the concept videos and if it is actually in practice where you know how to solve it but you are not able to do it in a mock scenario, then focus on practicing for the remaining, uh, uh, remaining uh, month as such. Um, okay, uh, okay. Uh, you want to deselect or uh, change option once it is marked if time passes. Uh, okay, uh, that I'll try to ask the tech team to do. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, I'll ask the tech team to change that. And uh, okay, Ariman wants a shout out. Okay, hi Ariman. Uh, I hope your uh, preparation is going well. Okay, uh, I think uh, most of you must have answered by now. Uh, if anybody has any query, I'll just keep an eye out. Uh, I think uh, I have missed some older queries. I'll just take a look at them now and uh, try to answer them if possible. I don't think I missed any query as such. Okay. okay uh Uh, Ma'am, I have uh, completed my syllabus but need to revise it. So, it might take 10 more days. So, should I attempt a mock after 10 days? Uh, Milan, don't do that. Don't keep uh, delaying attempting mocks. This I see a lot of students doing and I don't understand the uh, sense behind it. See, you have one month to uh, actual cat and you have uh, 10 mocks or uh, 15 mocks that you can take. Now, if you have... Uh, these many mocks, if you like delay it by 10 days and you have 20 days remaining, will you be actually be able to take the 15 or 18 mocks that we have of, uh, on offer? You won't be able to take them. Irrespective of, uh, uh, even if you take one a day, you'll have to take a mock, you'll have to analyze it, you'll have to go through the questions that you did incorrectly, look at the concept videos, revise, all of those steps are also there in after every mock. So you're not going to be able to cram all the mocks in the remaining time anyway. So it doesn't make sense to leave mocks for the last minute. Even if your revision is not complete, take a mock today. So at least you know where you stand. It might just be the case that your concepts, there are some gaps in your concepts that you are not aware of. So don't postpone taking mocks. This is the time when you should be taking a mock as much as possible. Uh, mostly I feel this is psychological where students feel that uh, they will not be able to do their perfect best when it comes to mock and that's why they delay it for the last moment. But essentially nobody really cares whether uh, the uh, mock attempt was perfect or not. 
each mock attempt is a learning opportunity uh, you give a mock to not just know uh, how you are doing or not just show what you already know but to know where you have to actually improve in just take it as a, a chance to know or find out where you should improve in it's uh, you it, you're not going to impress anyone with your mock score you should see this that this is my chance to gauge myself to test myself to be, uh, improve myself so don't get too hung up on i'll do it when i'm at my absolute best don't do that keep taking mocks regularly whether you feel uh, that you know everything or not you should do it regularly so that they help you uh, learn better so don't uh, uh, delay it unnecessarily okay so let's uh, uh, let's take a look at the uh, question and let's try to uh, solve it when pencroft had placed the bullet on the table his companions looked at it with in intense astonishment all the consequences likely to result from this incident notwithstanding its apparent insignificance immediately took possession of their minds uh, the sudden apparition of a supernatural being could not have startled them more completely uh, so essentially uh, 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 so essentially uh, this is a narrative kind of a fiction uh, kind of a paragraph a very short paragraph but the question uh, the language is not easy to read that is basically where some students might have tripped but it's a pretty simple question as such so what is the uh, uh, paragraph line by line let me explain so he uh, uh, some guy called pencroff placed a bullet on a table and when people saw that bullet they were like very uh, astonished to see it and uh, once they saw it they immediately started thinking the consequences of that without actually and they were so astonished that they were like uh, immediately went into thinking of the consequences of it that uh, uh, they didn't really grasp uh, like you, it might seem like an incongruous thing placing a bullet but uh, to the people who were there it was uh, it meant something so that meant uh, it meant something and that is why they were uh, immediately thinking of consequences of that small event and they were uh, uh, completely astonished by it they were so astonished by that uh, even a ghost would not have uh, stunned them more they were like completely stunned by seeing that bullet uh, him place that bullet on the table so in plain words that is what the paragraph is say so now if that is the paragraph what exactly is the summary of this paragraph pencroft put, played, puts a bullet on the table and his companions who are there are absolutely stunned to see it and they immediately start thinking of the consequences of that okay so that is the para summary uh, if you can understand the translation into simple english it becomes a very simple question as such so let's take a look at the options Pencroft's companions unaware of the insignificance of the bullet looked at uh, looked at it intensely as if they have uh, seen a supernatural being uh, again it, it's not they were it, they, the supernatural being basically what they were saying is that uh, a supernatural being or a ghost could not have uh, shocked them more so they were looking at it with so much surprise and uh, so much uh, shock that a ghost could not have shocked them more but he is not comparing the bullet with a ghost so option a is a clear distortion Uh, option b is the companions of pencroft uh, pencroft were completely startled by the apparition of a supernatural being again the supernatural being he didn't actually the comparison is that uh, it shocked uh, people as much as if uh, 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 seeing a ghost would have shocked them lesser so and startled by the apparition of a supernatural being the bullet so much that they started getting preoccupied with the consequences of the end so clearly this is incorrect So option B is clearly wrong because the bullet is not a supernatural being. Uh, option C is Pencroft uh, placing the bullet on the table had uh, deeply astonished his companions and had gotten them thinking about the consequences arising from it. Correct, absolutely nails it all as far as what is the implications of that particular statement. So the right answer is option C. The companions of Pencroft were so astonished by the bullet and the consequences of the incident that they failed to acknowledge its complete insignificance. now this is a uh, distortion where is it uh, where does author say that it is completely insignificant he says that it is apparently insignificant apparently insignificant means what that it appears incongruous he is just placing a bullet what is so what's the big deal of that so it appears insignificant but it was not insignificant to the uh, companions they understood the implications of it so it was not that the author is saying that it was an insignificant option uh, action so option d contains a uh, uh, distortion so the right answer is option c so i've uh, taken up a lot of uh, time for the first three questions so i'll hurry up a bit uh, with the next i'll be posting the next question soon so i hope all of you guys are ready so please be ready and i'll try to post the question soon okay so posting the question okay and many have gotten uh, the third question also right so good on you 
So make uh, please attempt this particular question and let's see who gets it right. Uh, Uh, Akash is asking, sometimes I understand the RCs clearly but face difficulty while answering the questions. So uh, basically, uh, just try to identify where you are going wrong. So in our concept videos, we have identified different types of questions. The central idea, purpose, uh, author's opinion, agree, disagree, critical reasoning type of questions. Also identify which questions you are actually having trouble with because uh, it might be just uh, your ability to not actually follow the logic uh, chain in specific types of questions. So also make a note of which questions you are having difficulty with and maybe then see that okay how do I answer these type of questions. If uh, like a uh, critical reasoning type of question comes how do I answer that question. So you can maybe need a question specific help as such. Okay. Uh, Chandrakant uh, post gave a supercharger I think. I, thank you Chandrakant. Uh, I'm glad that this uh, session is off uh, used to you and thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we'll try to do more sessions because I know that this helps a lot of students, especially those who are uh, uh, struggling and uh, CAT is coming up. This is a uh, uh, this is important for a lot of students. So we'll try to do more sessions and uh, your encouragement means a lot to us because if we know that we are helping students, it, uh, it makes it a whole lot more uh, 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 fruitful for us to actually do this if we know that we have actually made a positive difference to some uh, student's life. Uh, so thank you Chandrakan. My voice is failing after all of this talking, so I'll be uh, uh, trying to, I'll try to answer as much as possible. But thank you guys. Uh, I'll, uh, we have three more questions, uh, so let's try to do them quickly. Uh, okay, if uh, anybody has any other doubts, let's try to solve them also. I think the time is already up. And yeah, the time is up and a lot of guys have solved even this. I don't know how many uh, uh, pocket, mock and uh, daily target packages and t-shirts you'll have to end up giving because everybody is getting all of them right. Uh, I'm also happy that a lot of students are getting this right. So uh, no worries there. Uh, so let's uh, actually uh, take a look at the question. In the earlier epochs of history, uh, we find almost everywhere, uh, everywhere a complicated arrangement of society into various orders. A manifold uh, gradation of social rank, the modern bourgeois society that has sprouted from the ruins of feudal society has not done away with class antagonisms. It has also, it has but established new classes, new conditions of oppression, new forms of struggle in place of old ones. So basically, uh, uh, the modern bourgeois society has come out of the feudal society, but it has uh, kept their class structure as such. The earlier uh, society had like many, many uh, gradations of social rank. So the new bourgeois society has not really done away with uh, the uh, uh, way of class antagonism. There are just new forms of class, uh, new classes, new oppression, new forms of struggles. Our epoch, the epoch of the bourgeois, uh, possesses, however, this distinctive feature. It has simplified the class antagonisms. Society as a whole is more and more splitting up into two great hostile camps in uh, two great classes directly facing each other, bourgeois and proletariat. So the author basically says that uh, earlier there used to be this stratification and there used to be many classes as such. Uh, the new bourgeois uh, society that has emerged has not done away with this class structure, uh, has not done away with uh, having classes but it has uh, done away with uh, the number of uh, classes or layers that were there. There are now only two layers, one is the bourgeois layer, one is the proletariat and there is still an antagonism between them. There are, uh, there is just new classes and new antagonism and new, uh, ang uh, no, new uh, oppression between them. So uh, the class structure has not been thrown out, it has just transformed where it is now simpler and uh, two tier class structures. So let's take a look at the options. Uh, what would you say would be the main point? The main point is how the modern bourgeois society has emerged out of the older one and uh, uh, it has not discarded the class structure completely but it has simplified the class structure into a two tier society. So the first option is the modern bourgeois society is divided into two classes which directly face each other. Now this is not the point, you have to also say that uh, these are uh, antagonistic uh, classes, these uh, are not just like, uh, uh, this is not class A, class B, this is, these are people who are against each other and uh, there is like a uh, element of oppression and uh, antagonism between them, that is completely missing. So this is a com uh, very incomplete uh, option as such. 
okay true but incomplete and directly face each other doesn't uh, really make a, a whole lot of sense that's just an additional detail as such although the modern bourgeois have uh, has not de uh, detached uh, class antagonisms from the society it has done away with the multi layered gradation and now there are only two classes primarily which is basically what is the main point of the paragraph that uh, the stratification has become simpler from instead of having like n classes you have two classes a uh, proletariat and bourgeois so this is true the modern bourgeois society has not uh, uh, done away with class antagonisms it has just basically simplified it into a two set uh, two tier kind of society this is correct this is uh, capturing the main point so i think this is the para summary but let me also take a look at option c and d in the earlier time the practice of class division was very prevalent but now it has lost its significance and thus the modern bourgeois society is established this directly goes against what is actually said in the paragraph in the paragraph the author says that they didn't do away with the class structure in fact the class structure is still prevalent and there are two classes so option c is clearly wrong option d is the modern bourgeois society has its roots in feudal society and so there are only two classes primarily in which each face each other uh this part is true this part is also true two classes primarily but there is a distortion here and so there are only two classes it's not because it has its roots in feudal society that there are only two classes in fact this is something that is new that they have introduced where they have simplified the classes from a stratification of n classes to two classes so option d is clearly a distortion also it basically does not uh, uh, hint at the fact that there were many classes earlier which have now gone to only two classes so option d also misses the main point and has uh, uh, distortion so the right answer is option b uh, i know a whole lot of students got it right and i am glad that uh, you guys were uh, uh, you guys know exactly how to uh, uh, pick out the wrong uh, options and see distortions and all so let's take a look at the next question i'll be posting it soon so please get ready i'll be posting it in 5 uh, uh, seconds if anybody has any other option uh, any other question please post it in the chat and i'll try to answer that Uh, so uh, let's. Uh, I'll be posting in uh, uh, posting the next question now. So okay, take. okay. So let's take a look at the following question. Uh, uh, I'll answer any queries that are there in the meanwhile. How is a thirty score in VRC Kraku sectional? Um, I uh, I don't know for sure which uh, sectional you are talking about. You have not mentioned that. but i think that's a okay score as such uh, just see whether uh, uh, you should essentially think of uh, in each section you should think of clearing the 95 percentile barrier uh, in uh, if uh, what i look for in uh, most uh, attempts is basically uh, whatever is your uh, section which you are best at you should be aiming to get over 99 percentile in that particular section and in the other two section try to get around 95 percentile so overall you have a good enough percentile to actually uh, uh, clear the overall cut off as such uh, if vrc section is your uh, main section where you do well uh, then it won't be enough but if you just are looking for a 95 percentile uh, this i think that should be enough i think uh uh okay uh Uh, if you have any other question please keep uh, posting and we'll uh, take a look at this uh, particular uh, uh, question in a uh, while yeah okay uh, we uh, we'll actually give it to the first three rankers because uh, the rank is also based on how much time you take uh, so if you took all of the 2 minutes then you will actually come uh, lower in the score if you took lesser time you will be upper in, uh, uh, higher up essentially so even that is being counted in your attempt it's not just whether you were right but also how much time you took to solve so yeah we'll be giving it to the first three rankers uh i sorry i wish i could give it to uh, everybody but uh, then it would actually uh, reduce the importance of the prize uh how to answer critical vocabulary paragraph in uh, Uh, you mean critical reasoning questions so uh, i were uh, is asking how to answer critical vocabulary paragraph any uh, you mean critical reasoning questions so critical reasoning questions basically is a uh, fairly uh, important topic in itself uh, for omets for uh, uh, other uh, uh, exams uh, there are different aspects to it how to strengthen an argument how to weaken an argument all of that uh, we can uh, look into in, uh, in depth but essentially it requires a lot of uh, uh it's like a skill in itself it's not like um, 
uh, it's not uh, like vocabulary or something that you can pick up on. Uh, you have to think of it uh, logically that how do I strengthen the argument? What are the uh, evidences that would strengthen this? What are the evidences that would weaken it? So if you're uh, thinking of that, we have covered it extensively. Uh, I'm not sure if we have put any uh, videos on YouTube, but we have covered it extensively in our concept videos. So uh, if you have access, please take a look at there. Uh, and I'll ask if we have put any videos on YouTube of that. In case, the, just check our channel. We might have put, uh, we put a lot of videos for free also. Uh, uh, so I think uh, the time is up. Let us try to see the uh, option. Uh, see the uh, leaderboard. Oh, there are now three uh, uh, three leaders: uh, Saurabh, Debanil, and Geetika. Good on you guys. Uh, good that you are uh, leading, and you got even this question right. Uh, this I think is a slightly more uh, uh, difficult question, and uh, it got a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people got this incorrect. So let us take a look at this question. Uh, understanding has only one function: immediate knowledge of the relation of cause and effect. If the perception of the real world and all common sense, sagacity and inventiveness, however multifarious their applications may be, are quite clearly seen to be nothing more than manifestations of that one function. Uh, uh, so also the reason has one function and from it all the manifestation of reason, uh, reason are mentioned, which distinguish the life of man from that of the brutes may easily be explained. So what is this paragraph basically saying? Paragraph is basically... Uh, uh, See, essentially, uh, the paragraph is saying that understanding is only one function that is knowing, understanding the link between cause and effect. But just this understanding of this link between cause and effect is basically understanding and this understanding is the core of all uh, uh, perception as such. Under, uh, if you are perceiving the world, it is just basically perceiving the uh, link between cause and effect. All uh, uh, common sense, uh, sagacity, perception, everything is just basically this. And uh, this ability to understand the link between uh, cause and effect is essentially the bedrock of uh, human reason. That is essentially the, uh, if you are able to do that, you are uh, able to understand, you are able to reason and that is the key difference between somebody who is able to think like a human being and somebody who is not able to think like a brute. Uh, for example, any uh, animal or a lower level uh, cognition uh, person who does not understand the link between cause and effect is basically uh, referred to as a brute. So that is the uh, main point of the paragraph that is understanding the relationship between or understanding that is the link between cause and effect is basically the foundation of all perception and reason and uh, this is basically the key difference, this ability is the key difference between what, uh, what makes us human, what uh, makes human beings human uh, versus those who are uh, uh, brutes. Here essentially brute is kept as a sub uh, 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 a lesser creature who is incapable of thinking, uh, uh, who is incapable of thinking as well as humans. So let's take a look at the options. Understanding the relationship between cause and effect distinguishes man from brute. So that is basically the core of it that uh, what is the link, if you understand the link between cause and effect, you are, uh, that is the core of uh, all understanding of all perception of all reason and that is basically what makes you a human being versus what makes you a brute. So that is what distinguishes a human being from those who are uh, less uh, uh, subhuman almost. So option A is a good para summary. Option B is the brute does not understand the relation, uh, relation between cause and effect whereas a man does. Now this gets it wrong. Uh, the focus is not the brute and uh, the focus is not the distinction between the brute. The focus is on understanding the relation between cause and effect. That key component is basically what manifests all of our uh, thinking power. So the focus is on that, understanding the link between uh, cause and effect. Here the focus is on something else entirely. It misses the key point of understanding the importance between cause and effect. And it uh, forgets that this is actually at the core of all understanding as such. So option B misses the key point and hence is not the right answer. Option C is the perception of real world is that the relationship between cause and effect have multiple, uh, multiple applications. This sentence also does not really make sense uh, because uh, uh, essentially in this case uh, percep is that relation, the perception is, of, uh, is not the case. The, uh, to perceive is to basically understand the relationship between cause and effect. So option C does not even make uh, a sense as far as what is given in the paragraph is concerned. So option C is not the right answer. Option D is the relation between cause and effect plays a role in both perception and reason. This is true but it is incomplete. 
uh, it is not uh, the relation between cause and effect understanding the relation between cause and effect is what makes you uh, perceive things and makes you able to reason you have to understand that relationship that okay this is the cause this is the effect and understanding that link is what makes you uh, uh, perceive it is what makes you reason and this ability makes you human uh, it misses both the fact that you have to understand the link and the fact that this makes you human so bo because both parts are missing i would say that this is an incomplete option between options a and d a is more complete so the right answer is option a now let's take a look at the next question i'll be posting in uh, uh, 10 seconds please get ready let's uh, see the question so i'm posting soon if everybody is ready let's post okay uh, so let's take a look at the question okay and i'll try to uh, uh, answer the this uh, this i think is the last question uh, aishwarya uh, yeah i think uh, the sixth question so i think this was the sixth question uh, yeah so this is the last question and uh, by mistake i click we'll try to win the t-shirt next time uh, yes sneha we uh, i'm sorry that uh, uh, you missed it by one question just keep on trying it might still uh, you'd still have this question so just try uh, to answer it uh, and keep coming for our streams. We'll try to uh, give out as many T-shirts as many uh, this as possible. Uh, I'm glad you guys are like competing. Uh, this helps you uh, do better. It's uh, it's not about the T-shirt. Uh, this uh, spirit of doing well is what will actually get you the bigger price rather than the mock package or the T-shirt as such. So uh, it's good that you feel that uh, sense of competition. Um, Chandrakant uh, has asked, I have been preparing from the last two months for CAT. Sometimes I get good percentile and sometimes very bad percentile. Uh, this in turn incorporates self-doubt. What to do? See Chandrakant, uh, you can uh, have self-doubt if you feel that you have not given uh, uh, enough effort. You can feel that if you feel that I could have actually spent more time studying but I didn't. Uh, you won't have self-doubt if you feel that I have every single day when I could actually give time. I gave time and I studied. So uh, uh, this, uh, don't worry about what is your percentile, what is your, uh, 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 whether you got bad percentile or good percentile. So essentially the percentile is a function of how much uh, time and effort you're ready to put in. Focus on that part, don't focus on, uh, okay, I didn't get uh, a good score this time. Uh, you should use that to motivate you, but essentially your focus should not be on the scores, but on your effort. You put in the remaining one month in actually just sitting down and practicing, then uh, you will at least feel that, okay, I had one month and I made uh, sure that I did not uh, skip on any effort in that one month. I did everything that I could in that one month. Uh, at the end of the day, if you do something like that, you will feel very proud of yourself. On uh, CAT day, you will feel that you did everything that uh, you could have done to get a seat. Uh, to do well in CAT and that uh, will actually uh, help you have uh, confidence in yourself. Self-doubt comes from the fact that you, when you feel that uh, you could have done better, you could have given more time. Not from uh, poor mock scores or poor percentile, it comes from the fact that you feel that you are not doing enough uh, work. So put in the work, put in the hard work and then you will have lesser self. So uh, uh, if anybody has any, uh, this is our last question and I will be answering this question soon. Uh, I uh, I think this might be the uh, last, uh, uh, I, and this is a harder one, so I think this might actually uh, uh, distinguish between uh, students. Uh, let me see if uh, the time is up. Yeah, time is up. And yeah, uh, we have two clear guys who have uh, uh, come up top. Uh, Saurabh, so, uh, uh, Saurabh, Shrikant, Aishwarya and Soumya uh, who are at 14. Uh, you guys tried really well. Uh, you are just so close. Uh, hopefully, if you keep coming to the streams and keep practicing, you will uh, get to the top three. But congratulations, Deb Neil, Shubham, and Arya. You guys did really well. Uh, Deb Neil got all six right. Uh, congratulations. That is like phenomenal. Very well done. Uh, Shubham got uh, five right. Arya got five right. So very well done to. Uh, uh, all three of you and uh, uh, please drop in a mail at support at kraku.in and uh, with uh, the fact that you came in uh, first three in this uh, uh, session uh, just mail us at support at kraku.in and we'll uh, 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 get in touch with you and how we can give you the t-shirt and uh, the package okay? uh, so uh, congrats congratulations to all three of you uh, and those who uh, missed it by just one mark, uh, don't feel bad. 
the fact that you came that far also is a sign of uh, the fact that you have uh, worked hard and you should be proud of yourself so now let us take a look at the question okay so i'll hide this uh, the passion for philosophy like that for uh, religion seems liable to this inconvenience that so it it aims to uh, aims at the correction of our manners and extirp uh, extirpation of our vices it may only serve by imprudent management to foster a predominant inclination and push the mind with more determined resolution towards that side which already draws too much by the bias and propensity of the natural temper it is certain that while we aspire to the magnanimous firmness of the philosophic uh, sage and endeavor to confine our pleasures altogether within our own minds we may at last render our philosophy like that of epictetus and other stoics only a more refined system of selfishness and reason ourselves out of all virtue as well as social enjoyment this is a difficult paragraph to read and a difficult paragraph to understand i can understand why a lot of students were able to uh, did not get this properly but uh, you should not uh, get into the details or not uh, don't fall into the traps of bigger words or uh, this just look at the core of what the paragraph is take a look at the core of the sentences so what is the first sentence saying the uh, first sentence is saying that passion for philosophy if you are very passionate for philosophy similar to being very passionate about religion the problem is that if you get too passionate about it uh instead of actually being a guide to our manners and uh, helping us keep away from vices instead of doing things like that instead of making us better uh if we are uh, uh, if we don't manage it properly if we are too passionate we might become too uh, essentially like uh, what happens with religion where you become too much of an extremist so with uh, philosophy also you have that problem where you might become too much of an extremist if you are not able to temper your enthusiasm for philosophy you might become too much of an extremist and uh, you already have this inclination towards it okay you might have one inclination either way and because of it you might if you keep passionately uh, following your philosophy you might actually go to a uh, uh, that natural inclination might be pushed too far such that we actually reason ourselves out of all uh, uh, all behavior which is actually uh, sane and uh, normal and uh, uh, in fact you, uh, uh, what the author says what uh, your philosophic uh, sage would do a magnanimous sage would do uh, where, which is balanced as such because you already have this uh, uh, inclination towards a particular philosophical bent of mind if you are too passionate about it you might actually reach an extremist state uh, extremist uh, stage where you actually uh, reason yourself out of all virtue and of all uh, this and that's actually a selfish uh, pose to take where you are uh, you go to an absolute extreme stage as such so this is basically similar to an issue that you have with religion where you can uh, if you are too passionate about it you will uh, become an extremist similarly with philosophy because you are already bent to it you might become if you are too passionate about it you might become an extremist who is not uh, balanced in his uh, philosophical list you might be uh, you might reason yourself out of all virtue as well as social enjoyment so instead of actually correcting your manners you will become virtueless so basically this is a warning to those who to uh, over passionately uh, pursue philosophy over zealously uh, over zealous pers uh, pursuit of philosophy so let's take a look at the options even though philosophy is meant to correct our manners and destroy immoral behavior it can also push us to side with uh, uh, to the side which we were already biased towards which in turn may result in extreme version of philosophy now this extreme part is correct uh, it this part is also correct but it is uh, uh distorting what actually is pushing us towards an extremist view it's not philosophy itself okay the philosophy is uh, the subject or the discipline is not uh, forcing us to an extreme path our uh, overzealous pursuit of it is so what the author calls as imprudent management which is basically going too deep into it uh, going into an extreme end of it so it's not the subject it's not uh, uh, the author doesn't blame philosophy but it he blames our pursuit of it so option a contains that distortion so it's wrong option b is the inclination towards philosophy is misguided in the sense that people aspiring for greater philosophical achievements may end up convincing themselves that to give up all pleasures now this is uh, wrong on many parts firstly the author does not say that uh, inclination towards philosophy is misguided the author is basically saying go, don't go too deep into it don't go like cra uh, crazy extreme as such so this is wrong where the author is not saying that don't have an inclination towards philosophy 
or that uh, uh, all of that uh, is not what is given in the paragraph so option b is also incorrect option c is the philosophy like uh, religion sometimes deviates from its aim of correcting our manners and may fail to destroy the immorality within us which may lead to the development of a system of selfishness this is incorrect what the author is saying is that uh, uh, like when you take it to the extreme that happens not that philosophy itself guides you there so it's not the problem of philosophy or religion it is philosophy or religion taken to an extreme which is a problem so option c is also incorrect the fact that uh, uh, the author is saying that don't uh, essentially don't uh, with imprudent management uh, so essentially basically if you mismanage your uh, passion it is going to have a bad outcome option d is although philosophy is meant to correct us its irresponsible pursuit may push us to a side we are inherently biased towards and we may end up with an extreme version of philosophy tick on all aspects it is meant to correct us it is meant to correct our manners make us better people but if you have an over zealous pursuit of it you might actually uh, you have a natural whatever your natural inclination is you might go too deep into that natural inclination to an extreme end to the point that you no longer have any uh, uh, to like an extreme version of that so option d clearly captures what is the main point of this so option d is the right answer so i know a lot of students struggle with it it's just a difficult read but once you understand the heart of it it's easy to understand which option to pick as such uh, i hope you guys uh, 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 i hope that this session was helpful to you guys and again congratulations to devanil shubham and arya you guys did exceedingly well and uh, i'm glad that so many students joined in with the for this particular session and that this was helpful uh so now that you guys have some basic understanding that okay this is what is needed uh where uh, it also make a note of which kind of paragraphs kind of threw you off a lot of students uh, don't uh, generally do well with philosophical paragraphs like this so also make a note of all those things and keep on go back and practice we have one month left to cat so please make sure that this is the month where you take a lot of mocks analyze the mocks uh, and keep practicing uh, i cannot emphasize how much it is the need to practice now uh when i gave cat literally the last two weeks of cat i just locked myself up and i just kept solving questions i was i went into this mode where i was just solving questions one after the other so that basically gave me the confidence on cat day that uh, i have solved like a thousand questions over the past two weeks i can solve more so that essentially should be your mindset when you go in just focus like completely focus on practice if you need help with concepts look up a concept if you don't know otherwise focus on practice uh it was really really uh, nice having so many students over for this session so thank you guys a lot and uh, again congratulations to uh, debanil uh, shubham and arya you guys did very well thank you guys